Hello students, welcome to the physics session. Today we are going to do the topic of natural and artificial magnets that fall under the unit of natural and artificial magnets under the theme of magnetism. Okay students, so let's begin with this. When we talk about magnets, they are classified into two categories. One is the natural magnet and the other is the artificial magnets. Now let's begin with defining them one by one. The natural magnets are defined as a material which occurs naturally and has magnetic properties. That means the material that has magnetic properties on its own. It is not created by humans. The example of natural magnet would be magnetite. The formula for magnetite was Fe3O4. This is a natural magnet that was discovered by Magnus. The other example of magnets are artificial magnets. An artificial magnet is defined as a substance to which properties of natural magnet are imparted. That means these kinds of magnets are made by humans and the properties of magnetism are imparted in such materials. Such materials such as iron, steel, cobalt, all of these can form artificial magnets. That means they are capable of imparting the properties of a magnet. Now, there are various shapes of a magnet. We had already seen that magnetite was a stone. It was the ore, right? So, it occurs naturally in the form of a stone. But when we construct magnets, when we make artificial magnets, we can make various shapes for the magnets, right? So, here are some of the common shapes that you find in the market when which magnets are available. One such shape is the bar magnet. This is the most common of the magnets. It has the north and the south pole in it and it's shaped like a bar. The other one is a cylindrical magnet. It might be shaped like a cylinder that you see at your home. It is, it is the shape of a pipe. The other magnet is a dumbbell shaped magnet. Now if you had seen those dumbbells that you used to exercise with is called the dumbbell shaped magnet. Another is a U-shaped magnet. When your magnet is shaped in the letter U, you call it a U-shaped magnet. And the last one that is used in a very special tool called the compass is the magnetic needle. It is used to show the direction in the tool called compass. Now students, if you can see in these various images, the left side is colored blue. And the right side is colored red. Plus there is a letter N on the left side and a letter S on the right side. This shows that all the magnets have a very particular property that are called poles. These poles are there in any magnet irrespective of its shape. That means does not matter if you go from a bar magnet to a needle or a U-shaped magnet to a cylindrical magnet. All the magnets will have the north and the south pole. Okay? Now there is a very small note for you to get some information. A mixture of ferric oxide, now this is a compound, and barium oxide is strongly magnetic. Now, this is an example how you can make very strong magnets artificially. If you use a mixture of ferric oxide and barium oxide, you can make a very strong magnet. These kind of magnets are called ferrite. It is commonly called as ferrite. It is used to make powerful magnets for radios and transistors. 
this is the application of such very strong magnets where they are used they are used in various components like radios and transistors okay students now there comes an important thing why do we need to make artificial magnets now magnets find immense application in so many things around that we do not cannot work without let's say your mobile phones your speakers your radios and television all these electronic components have magnets in them so when we need to use magnets in such diverse technologies we have to make them artificially let's read the points they can be made very powerful now when we make a magnet we can decide how powerful it should be so artificial magnets have some benefits so these are the benefits of making artificial magnets one they can be made very powerful which is not possible in the case of natural magnets the second point is they can be made in any desired shape or size now this is what we had already seen when we are making a magnet it is on us in which shape we require the magnet it is not possible in case of natural magnets as in case of magnetite we know it occurs in the shape of a random stone which breaks when shaped with cutting tools now this is a drawback of natural magnets if we try to shape them in a particular manner they might break they are very fragile but on the other hand while making artificial magnets it is on us how strong we want to make it plus in which shape we desire to make them so they find use and application in diverse technologies okay students now there is one more fact here the fact says iron cobalt nickel and steel are called ferromagnetic substances now when you will grow up and go to higher classes and study science you will learn about various types of magnetic substances they vary on their properties so when we make magnets out of iron cobalt nickel and steel those kind of magnets artificial magnets form what kind of magnets ferromagnetic substances the word ferro is combined with the latin name of iron so ferro is derived from a latin term fer that means iron and the substances which behave like iron as for a magnetic properties are concerned are called ferromagnetic substances so if a substance behaves like iron they are called ferromagnetic substances so which are those substances iron cobalt nickel and steel okay students thank you